The newest launch from Hyundai in India this year will be the all new Exter. And the internet has done its thing and you can find the images of the all new Exter without any concealment uh, ahead of its official debut. So in this video, we'll be taking a look at everything that you need to know about the Exter. We'll be discussing uh, what we can expect from it uh, while taking some well-educated guess. And in the third part of this video, we'll be discussing why you should wait for this all-new Hyundai instead of going ahead and buying yourself the Tata Punch. Hello and welcome back to Carwale. I'm Bilal and if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to the Carwale YouTube channel. And if you like this video, uh, do hit that thumbs up button as well and comment uh, down below what you like about it and what you want more from the next or upcoming videos. Like all Hyundai products, the Exter would be a global offering and it will be based on the K-series platform. But there are three stages of K-series platform, the K1, the K2 and the K3. And the Exter would be based on the K1 series platform where it will share its underpinnings with the Grand i10 and the Aura. But why is there a need for an entry-level SUV like the Exter? If you look at the sales figures for the last six months, the venue outsold both the Grand i10 and the i20. Over to the Tata, the Punch has not only outsold the Tiago, but also managed to find twice the takers in some months. The reason behind this is the car buyer's affinity towards SUVs. Now, after the C segment and the D segment sedans, even the compact sedans and the compact hatchbacks have taken a hit with this SUV fever. Even the small car buyers want uh, an SUV feel from their cars, and the car makers have taken a notice of this. So, the Tata Punch is a punch in the right direction. And Hyundai also wants a piece of this pie. So their offering in this up and coming segment is the all new Exter. Officially, Hyundai has only released a design sketch of the all new Exter. It carries something called as parametric dynamism design language, which is all new and is not shared with the current Hyundai lineup. But as I said earlier, the Exter's exterior design is out in the open and it's looking promising. The good thing is it doesn't look like a hatchback on stilts. It carries a proper SUV-like stance with an upright nose, flat roof, blacked out cladding and some polarizing elements as well. There's a edge like insignia on the headlamps and the tail lamps and the black finishes are seen on the front and rear bumper. Even the tail lamps are now connected across the tailgate which appears to be the new trend these days. With little overhangs both fore and aft, the wheelbase appears to offer better space utilization inside the cabin. Something we have seen work well with the Tata Punch. Under the hood, there might not be anything of a surprise. Since the Exter shares its underpinning with the Granite and Neos and the i20, we expect the powertrains to be shared with these hatchbacks as well. This means powering the Exter would be the familiar 1.2 litre four cylinder naturally aspirated petrol engine. It will be offered with a five speed manual or an AMT. We might also see the IMT clutchless manual transmission as well as the 1 litre turbo with a DCT powertrain to be offered at a later date with the Exter. And if that powertrain makes it to the Exter, we might also see the fancier N line version of it in no time. Moreover, the Exter's popularity could be improved with the factory fitted CNG option, giving more choices to the buyers. As for recording this video, we have no idea what the cabin of the Extra would be like. But as far as Hyundai's track record goes, uh, the cabin of the Extra won't be matched with any of the current models, including the Neos, the i20 or even the Venue. We expect it to have a feature-loaded cabin. It will offer all the features that you can expect from a segment, while also offering many new segment-first features. We could expect a floating touchscreen seen in the new Verna along with a newly designed driver's display, wireless charger, air purifier, sunroof and even new age connectivity features to be offered in the Exter. Now the Hinda Exter would be taking the fight directly to the Tata Punch, but this segment also has another player, the newcomer Citroen C3. The C3 also offers a raised hatchback-like stance and good powertrain choices. But there are a few aspects why you don't see the C3 as much on the road. 
but that's a discussion for some other day. So in this video, let's focus on the punch and see what makes it sell an average of 10,000 units a month and what the extra needs to do to beat it at its own game. The punch has already scored 5 stars in the global NCAP crash tests, which is a major reason for buyers to get home the punch without a second thought. Safety has become an important aspect for the buyers and the 5 star NCAP rating is a strong testament for the buyers, which the extra needs to be prepared for. Tata's cabin have always been known for offering maximum space and the punch is no different. For its size on the outside, the punch offers surprisingly more cabin space where three can fit comfortably at the back. And even the front seats make it feel like you're driving a much bigger car. This could be a big challenge for the Extra on how its packaging is done. Over the years, Tata has improved the quality of its cabins by leaps and bounds. This is apparent in the punch as it not only offers a good design, but the fit and finish are also up to the mark. The quality of plastic is good and you feel like you are sitting in a well-made car. Not only do you get a 1.2-litre petrol engine with a 5-speed manual, but there's also a choice for an AMT. There's also a factory-fitted punch CNG in the pipeline, which will go on sale pretty soon. Now let's take a look at what the punch can do better and what the extra should take advantage of. The 1.2-litre petrol engine in the punch offering 86 bhp and 130 Nm on paper is one thing, but when it comes to real-world performance, it's a completely different story. Behind the wheel, the punch is not very dynamically exciting to drive and is more engineered for comfort, something which the extra might be able to balance well. As the punch is set up for comfort, the ride quality is on a softer and more absorbing side. So while it is good to take in bad roads, at the same time it does tend to unsettle and bottom out when fully loaded. It also takes time to settle over undulation and that is a bit of a bummer. On the upside, the punch is good where the road ceases to exist and the extra needs to be good too in order to give the punch a run for its money. Given Hyundai's newer cars are much better engineered, the extra could have an upper hand. A balanced ride quality is expected of the extra if it wants to woo the punch buyers. And we also know it would offer more powertrain choices. For instance, Hyundai has an AMT, IMT and even a DCT apart from the manual transmission. Better interior quality and more features are some of the very reasons that would make the buyer consider the extra before putting the money down on the punch. As of now, we don't have a fixed date for the reveal of the all-new extra, but it's just around the corner. In the coming few weeks, we could see a teaser for the interior, followed by a feature teaser before we get to see the extra in full. The Tata Punch is currently priced between 6 to 10 lakh rupees ex showroom, and we expect Hyundai to price the extra at a slight premium over the punch. So are you waiting for the all-new Extra as well or are you firm on your decision of buying the Tata Punch instead? Let us know your opinion in the comment section below. And if you have any other questions regarding the all-new Extra, do write them down in the comment section below and we'll try to answer them all. That's all from this video. This is Bilal signing off. Until next time.